Number 101. The molecule XF3 has a dipole moment. Is X boron or phosphorus? Okay. So it seems like we have a secret or a unknown molecule here, XF3, and we just have to figure out if this element in the front is either boron, which on the periodic table is B, so B for boron, and P for phosphorus. Now, the thing here is that they're talking about it that this whole molecule has a dipole moment. Now, when you have a dipole moment, you have an unequal distribution of electrons somewhere in this molecule. Mainly, there's going to be a pull of electrons towards one side, whether it's the top, bottom, left, right, doesn't really matter. But one side is favoring more electrons than the other. And whenever that somebody or, you know, some molecule has a dipole moment, the molecule is always a polar molecule. So dipole goes with polar. So basically, we just have to figure out if boron was in this place, would it be polar? Or if phosphorus was in this place, would it be polar? Now, in order to answer this question, uh, the easiest way to do it is to just take a second and draw the Lewis structure. It takes a couple of extra seconds, but I promise you, once you visualize what the molecule actually looks like, the Lewis structure can give you answers to a lot of questions. So normally with these types of questions, they don't, you know, they won't blatantly say, hey, draw the Lewis structure. That would be too easy. But in order to answer this question, um, the easiest way is to just draw it out, see what it looks like, and then we can come to a conclusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, we have BF3, and then we have PF3. We're going to draw the Lewis structure for both of these. Now, there's tons of videos on the channel just designated to helping you how to draw the Lewis structures. You could always check out those videos. We go step by step um, to, you know, go through the Lewis structures, and I'm there every step of the way for you guys. This one will kind of be a quick inversion. So if you want, you could pause the video and see if your Lewis structures for BF3 and PF3 match mine. All right, so let's go. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, so fluorine is never in the middle. So in this case, boron has to be in the middle, surrounded by the three fluorines. So maybe I'll put one F up here, one F down here, and one over here. And the same thing for the phosphorus, right? I have a phosphorus, and then I have three fluorines, so... I guess, I guess we'll put them in the same spot. Drawing Lewis structures, you don't really have to get the bond angles correct. Um, all you got to do is just make sure that you have the correct connections. Now, for each one of these, fluorine wants to have a single bond. And in order to get the octet rule for fluorine, you always have to have those six electrons, especially if it's not the center, which it's never going to be the center element. So six electrons to get the octet, and boron had a uh, valence electrons of three, so it used its three electrons to make the bonds. So there's no lone pairs for boron. Coming over to phosphorus, we still have to make those single bonds, and to get phosphorus, uh, to get uh, fluorine to being all octet up, we need those six electrons, so there's Nothing special about that. And then uh, phosphorus had five valence electrons. So three of them made the single bonds with the fluorine. So that means that there's two left over. So I do have to put a pair of electrons somewhere around the phosphorus. Okay, now all we have to do is snap it out, right? S-N-A-P. This is a cute little acronym to memorize what goes with nonpolar molecules and what goes with polar molecules. Now keep in mind that if we have a dipole moment, we want to be polar. A nonpolar molecule, nonpolar means no pull, no dipole. Only the polar molecule will have the dipole moment, the unequal sharing of electrons. So now, if I look at boron, I see that I have a central atom, and if I try to draw a line of symmetry, and yes, you can draw a line of symmetry down an element. You can kind of like, 
you know, break the fluorine up into two pieces. That's totally legal. If we break this up, I just have a fluorine on the left and a fluorine on the right. That looks pretty symmetrical to me. Let's try to do the same thing for the phosphorus. Now, if I try to split that, that one down the middle, uh-oh, I have a fluorine on the one side, but then I have a fluorine and this lone pair. Now, there's a general rule that always goes with polar molecules, especially if you have central atoms with lone electrons. If your atom, if your center or your central atom has the dots, right? I don't care if it's two pairs or one pair or whatever. If it has a dot in the center, it is automatically polar. So I have phosphorus having the one lone pair. Right off the bat, I know that this is a polar molecule. And polar molecules have the dipole moment. So PF3 would have a dipole moment. If we just quickly look back at uh, the boron one, boron, everything was symmetrical. I had two fluorines, right? I split this one fluorine down the middle, so this was symmetrical, which means that it's nonpolar. So who was the X if we wanted the polar molecule? X was equal to phosphorus. And there you go. Box it off, and we are done with this one. That was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, what'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. Um, love helping you guys out. We also got physics and math videos on the channel. More subjects to come in the future. So I'm excited. Um, I hope you're having a great day out there and keep studying hard. Always keep learning and, you know, you'll go far. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.